Welcome again to our Health Week presentation. So for Health Week 2021, we'll be focusing on addiction. I am Adrian Palmer, Health Ministries Leader at Aruka Seventh-day Adventist Church. So let us continue into our focus on addiction. So when we hear addiction, there are several things that comes to mind. For example, tobacco smoking, marijuana smoking, alcohol drinking, cocaine, heroin, painkillers, you know, other drugs and medications. For some persons, it might be pornography. You know, those are the things that come to mind when we hear anyone talk about addiction. But today I want to talk about something that plenty of us have become addicted to. Some of us just loves it very dearly, but we don't really talk about it uh, and how this could have an spiritual implications for us. So I want us to talk about food addiction. Yes. And if you look at the screen, you'll see various foods that many people love dearly. Some persons might be addicted to some, others might just really love those. For example, fried chicken and fries, ice cream, chocolate. Some person feel like if they don't get a chocolate, they, or when they eat a chocolate, they feel so good. Roti. Some persons really love roti and they can't have a week or, or, or if they have been roti, they have to have it several times so that week, you know? So there are different foods that persons like and some foods some persons may even become addicted to. But what really is food addiction? According to the Food Addiction Institute, food addiction is a chronic and a progressive disease. So note, it, it, it could be a disease characterized by a few things such as seeking foods or food behaviors we're addicted to. And you know, when we talk about addiction, it means that you know, things that you, know, you, you need them to function or to, 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 to feel yourself, right? And it's also character, food addiction is also characterized by eating or, or doing these different food behaviors compulsively, meaning you have that strong feeling to do them. And at the same time, listen to this important part, having a great deal of difficulty controlling these urges, despite knowing harmful consequences. Can some of us relate to that? Are there foods you know that, hey, this might not be the best thing for my health, but I love it too much and I have to have it. You know, think about it. And also at the same time, I want, I want everyone to know that sometimes what we might call food addiction may not really qualify to be addictive behaviors. Some persons have certain cravings that we would describe as um. They, they, they are psychological processes and, and they bring about pleasurable characteristics that, that are, that are um, pleasurable characteristics associated with certain foods. So for example, some persons they could really do without chocolate, but sometimes they have craving, a craving for chocolate and they just like the sensation that they get when they eat chocolate, mm, that kind of thing, right? So they might not be addicted. They might not have strong compulsive behaviors, towards eating chocolate and you know that kind of thing. But they, they have a special kind of craving. But we want to address both this evening. So have you have you heard these at times, especially amongst our brethren and other Christians? I know that eating, let's insert a food, for example, let's say for example, meat, right? I know that eating meat it's not good for me, but I'm trying hard to stop by God's grace. You ever heard that before? Or, for example, I know it's better for my health if I stop eating cheese or if I stop eating too much ice cream, too much chocolate, but I love it too bad. You ever heard those phrases or, or have you ever heard anyone saying those things? Normally, when persons say these things, it's an indication that these persons know that, you know, these things might not be the best thing for my health, but I have a struggle 
trying to stop. It's hard for me to stop. So that is basically what they are trying to say when you, when you will hear persons with these things. But why is it important for us to control our appetite? Listen to this excerpt from Testimonies to the Church. Satan has overcome millions, millions by tempting them to the indulgence of appetite. So if you even remember our first parents in the Garden of Eden, how were they overcome? They were attacked from the point of appetite as well. And it also says that Satan has overcome millions through the gratification of the taste. And they said the nervous system becomes excited and brain power becomes enfeebled, making it impossible to think calmly or rationally. And they said this makes the mind become unbalanced and the higher nobler faculties are perverted to serve animal lust and the sacred eternal interests are not regarded. When, 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 when we seek to gratify this, these are the things that happen. And if you remember in a previous discussion in one of our Wednesday night meetings, we talk about why when the devil tempted Christ, it came first temptation was around appetite because he knew that that was the point he could win at. And this, when I came across this information, it was also showing me the importance of fasting and praying, not just praying and fasting, but fasting and praying. Because when you get that control over appetite and you resist that gratification of taste, the nervous system remains balanced and you're able to think more calmly and more rationally. And, 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 and with that, according to this um, excerpt from Testimony to Church, right? Eternal interests are more regarded. So it's really important for us to get that control of just satisfying, satisfying our taste. Plenty of times we eat because we like how something tastes or we like how we feel when we eat something. We don't necessarily eat something because it's good for our health. And that is not the right approach that we as Christians should take. So what are some practical and spiritual steps we could take to overcome these cravings that we have or if we're addicted to certain foods? We have some of the steps that we had mentioned in the previous presentation, but we want to look at some more specifically to handling food, food addiction or food cravings. First point we want to say, you must look to Christ. Because remember, Christ was the one who were tempted as we were in all different forms and all fashion, but he overcame all temptation. So we must first look to Christ for our example. That is number one. Number two, we need to be like Daniel and the Hebrew boys. The, 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 the Bible said they purpose in their heart to not consume the foods that they did in Babylon. So, so when we're going to overcome foods that we know it's not good for us or we know that it's not the healthiest, we must first purpose in our hearts to say, listen, I want to overcome this. I want to stop eating this or I want to be more temperate in eating this. We must be purposeful and, and, and decide that, listen, I'm not doing this, or uh, this is how I'm going to go about handling this. Three, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So think, when you're eating something, as I said, we should eat for health and not just because we like taste or we like how something makes us feel. So question you must ask yourself, are you putting your appetite or yourself over God when you eat? That is something we must consider. But let us purpose in our heart not to put ourselves or not to put our appetite over God. But when we eat, we will eat for the sake of our health and not necessarily for gratifying our taste because we already know the consequences of that. Next point, remember Christ is our master. So let us not be slaves to our appetite. We have one master, and that is Christ. We cannot serve two masters. So if we're a slave to our appetite, we cannot, we cannot make ourselves be servants to God. So 
we should have only one master. Anything that should have supreme control over our life should be the love of Christ and not the love of food and the love for other things that we may become addicted to. Another point that you could do, you know something is not good for you. Start by fasting from that. It might be difficult, but when you start by fasting from the things you know you love to eat that may not be good for your health, you start to put other things in um, to replace it. It might be foods that originally you don't like the taste or you don't get that same kind of gratification. But when you continue to do it, you continue to do it, you fast from the food that you know is not good for you and you put in other plainer foods, after a while that food will become more palatable to you, meaning you'll be able to enjoy it more when you eat it. Next point, pray for the moral courage to say no. Sometimes the temptation might come you know, somebody might even come to you and say, hey, eat some ice cream, man, or eat a piece of this, eat a piece of that. You must be able to say, no, I am not going to eat it. You know, have that firmness, say, no, I don't want it. I will not be eating it. So, 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 so that is an important step to take. And I want to finish off by highlighting this, 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 this one line from chapter 8 in councils and diet and food titled the control of appetite. And I would recommend to everyone to find some time to read this chapter. There are plenty interesting points in it about, you know, appetite and controlling our appetite and how it relates to our spiritual experience with God. Listen to this piece as we close. But those who are slaves to appetite will fail in perfecting Christian character. So if you are on the journey to perfect your Christian character, to resemble Christ, to be more like Christ, we must reach a point where we have control over our appetites. If we cannot control our appetite, we'll have a hard time perfecting the Christ-like characters because Christ himself was the overcomer of all temptation, even that of food after fasting for 40 days. So, brethren, I just want to leave you with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that at times we may be eating or partaking in food. Some of us may be addicted. Some of us may only have cravings. And we know that these foods are not good for us. They are harmful to our bodies. We, we have known, we have heard it in church from time to time. We have seen the research. We have seen the scientific material. We, we, we have reviewed LNG white words. But sometimes we feel these things, we can't let them go. We find reasons to tell ourselves it's okay for us to continue to eat these things. But Father, we know that you're our only master. You're the only one that should reign. So your love should reign supreme in our life. And our appetite and our tastes should be anything that, 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 that we come under control of. So Father, we ask you for the power to overcome. We ask you for the strength to encourage each other into proper eating habits into replacing these bad eating habits and, and putting good eating habits. Give us the strength to overcome. Give us the strength to be better Christians. Give us the strength to perfect our character and to be more like you. We pray and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you again. Please look out for our next presentation.